Welcome to UMedSat. My name is Daniel Lee, and today we'll be looking at five fascinating environmental phenomena as seen from our satellites in space. The first one that we are looking at is a medicane, which is essentially a very large storm in the Mediterranean. The second phenomena we'll look at is the La Palmas eruption that took place this year in 21. Next, we're going to look at two wildfires. Specifically, we'll examine the smoke plume from one of the recent wildfires in California and a recent wildfire in Greece. The fourth thing that we'll look at is a large dust storm that took place earlier this year in 2021, where dust was carried from the Sahara into southern Europe. The last thing I'll show you is an algal bloom. This is where algae in the ocean reproduces so much and so quickly that it can pull the oxygen out of the water and even create poisons. So sometimes this leads to beach closures. We'll look at how it looks from space. To show you all of these things, I'll be using Wikeo, which is a platform that's part of the Copernicus program. Wikeo was built by UMETSAT, ECMWF, the European Commission, the EEA, and Mercado Ocean. Going to the Wikeo platform, you can see that there's all kinds of different things that you can look at, and if you want to learn about these in detail, I invite you to visit our tutorials that you'll find linked in the video description text. I'm going to go straight to where I want to be, which is with the data, and that's here. I'm going to zoom in on the area that I'm interested in. Now you see a picture of the Earth with all the clouds removed. And this isn't a picture from a specific point in time, this is a composite picture. What I'm going to do now is load a picture of this area on the day that I'm interested in. And that is the 30th of October this year, 2021. I do that by clicking the plus button with the layers, and now I can search for the data that I'm interested in. I can see all of the data sets on the right side here, and I can also see their categories on the left. What I like to do is use the free text search because I'm already familiar with what I'm looking for. However, if I wasn't sure what that was called, I could use these tags to find what I'm interested in. For example, if I'm interested in the cryosphere, this limits what I see to only the cryosphere. Now I'm going to remove that filter and search straight away for Sentinel-3. And now you see the datasets that are available to me are those that have been produced using Sentinel-3. I'm going to use the Ocean and Land Color Instruments full resolution product which I now add to the map like this. And as you can see, here I have a picture of the Earth as seen by the ocean land color instrument, the OLCHI, today at midnight. And at the bottom now that I've added some data, I can say at what time I would like to see things. I just slide this all the way to the left and here we're at almost the same place a year ago. Let's take a look at late October when there was a Medicaid, a big storm, in the Mediterranean. You see it's the 30th of October 2021, and you can see several views of this storm as seen by the Sentinel-3 OCHI instrument. And this is already great because we can see it's a very large storm, and it's reflecting a lot of light back out into space. I mentioned that Wikio is a platform where you can pull in all kinds of environmental data from all across the Copernicus program. And that's one of the things that makes Wikio so powerful and interesting. What I will do now is add some information to this map about what's going on underneath the clouds. Things that we can't see with this instrument from space, but we can pull in the same information from other sources using this platform. In order to pull up this information about the waves that are going on, Beneath the clouds, I look at the waves analysis. And that you can find here. When I click add this data set to the map, I'm presented with a number of options because the data set actually contains 17 products. And I can choose from these layers to say which ones I want to add to the map. What I'm interested right now is the swell and I'm also interested in the surface waves. 
and there's a lot of information I could add here. I could add the direction, for example, but in this case, to keep things simple, I'm just looking at how much swell do we have and how high are the waves. And the interesting thing that you see here is if we turn off these layers, here's the storm at this point in time. And the storm is kicking up waves on the ocean. These waves are the strongest directly underneath the storm because they're driven by the wind. But the storm, or at least the pressure zone that's generated this storm, has existed for some more time. There's more going on in the ocean that produces swell. These are these kind of longer term waves. And so if we look at the swell, we'll see a different story. We see in fact that the waves are kind of, or that the swell is stacking up against the coast where they have no place to go. So already you can see there's a a lot of rich information that you can add to this. Now that you've seen how to select data on Wakeo and add it to a map, I'm going to show you some pre-selected layers uh, to showcase certain phenomena that I find especially interesting. And we'll start with looking at the La Palma eruption that took place earlier this year. You may actually remember this eruption. Uh, it took place very recently in the fall of this year and it affected a lot of people. The lava flow was coming off the mountainside and uh, it was a lot in the news. Something that I found very interesting is that this impressive environmental phenomenon, uh, which is very destructive on the ground, it caused a lot of destruction. It also um, gave us some information about things that we may not have known about otherwise. An example of this is how bees were able to seal themselves inside their hives while the ashes buried their hives and they stayed inside and lived off of the honey that they'd gathered previously and survived for a really, really long time. Uh, so the people that live in La Palma are rebuilding very actively. So while we have a lot of destruction that's associated with this, there's also a lot of hope to be had. In my case, I'd rather look at this from space. And that's what I'm going to be showing you now, which is the view from very, very far away. And this is what our satellite saw on the um, 30th and 31st of October this year. And what you see here is just a massive volcanic plume. So the ash is going way off the island. You can see where the wind is carrying the clouds. You can see this big, big plume. And to set that in relation to the island itself, it's not the largest island in the world, certainly, but it's pretty big. And the plume is easily the size of the entire island. Fascinating, pretty scary, and amazing to see from space. Next, we're going to look at two wildfires briefly that also took place this year. One of them is in California, and that's what you see on my screen right now. And so this is the Alisol fire. You can see the coastline and the smoke from these fires going off into space. And if I zoom out, you'll see that this smoke carries very, very far. In fact, there are other products that are a bit harder to interpret, um, but give you a bit more information about the, the atmospheric composition that are very, very impressive. And you can see how the smoke from fires such as this can actually travel all around the world. And to give you a sense of the scale, this is the point at which you might begin to recognize California. And here, much larger than a large city, is the smoke plume. We had a similar situation in Europe this year as well, in Greece. And I can show that to you here. So what you see is plumes from wildfires as they spread throughout the atmosphere. And also, interestingly, some storms over here. And if we zoom out, you can get an idea of the scale. And this is one area where we see how important it is to be able to see these things from space. Because the smoke, you can see it from quite far away, but you don't necessarily have a lot of advance warning when it's coming towards you. So for people with respiratory illnesses, or um, even if you're just interested in how clear the atmosphere is because you're a photographer or because you have solar panels, this is really, really useful information. And it's quite hard to model. So while we can extract some of the information and forecast it using weather prediction models, having the observation of these phenomena from space is really, really valuable and it saves property and lives. The next thing I'd like to show you is a dust storm. And this is a really interesting phenomenon where, in this case, the dust is originating in the Sahara 
and it's being carried by the wind all the way into Europe. And this may sound unusual to you because the Sahara is in Africa and Europe is another continent, but it happens fairly frequently. The wind doesn't have very much to block it in the Sahara, so it can reach incredible speeds. And when it does, it picks up a lot of dust. This dust is then carried all the way across the Atlantic and it actually has been shown to fertilize the Amazon rainforest. That's when the wind is carrying the dust towards South America. When the wind is going in a different direction, then the dust can come towards Europe. And you may notice this because the skies are really, really dreary and a lot of dust lands everywhere. In February of this year, 21, such a storm happened, and we can see that using the Sentinel-3 Ochi instrument. So we see the start of the event. You can see that the wind is already carrying some clouds up from the Western Sahara towards Spain. And if we step forward in time, you'll see the storm as it progresses and takes on more and more dust. We've now advanced into the 5th of February at around 3 o'clock UTC, and you can see that there is a lot of wind carrying material towards Europe from the Sahara. And in the course of a few hours, you'll see that a lot of dust is picked up and carried with it. You can see by this point how opaque the atmosphere has become, and that's because of the high aerosol load that it's carrying. This is uh, one way of measuring this is called aerosol optical depth, and that's actually one of the environmental products that you can find using remote sensing, so using satellites. When we look at it like this, we're seeing uh, just an optical impression of how much dust that is. And if I were to follow this, you would see that it penetrates very far onto the European mainland where it mixes with the clouds that are forming over Southern Europe. Now we'll turn to the ocean where we'll see two of the most powerful phenomena on our planet, which is the chlorophyll in the sea and the ocean circulation. And these happen to also be some of my favorite visual products that you can find on Wakeo because they're very, very beautiful to look at. What you see on my screen is the concentration of chlorophyll in seawater. And this is a very beautiful data set to look at because it's very colorful and because it reflects a lot of things that's going on in the ocean. It's reflecting the currents and the temperatures and the amount of nutrients available. And interestingly, you can see all over the world that a lot of the chlorophyll production is close to land. Now, one of the main reasons for this is because of the fact that the land uh, ocean interface is a good environment for chlorophyll production. These make for interesting ecosystems and there's a lot of turnover of materials there. Another reason why you might see a lot of chlorophyll is because of algal blooms where nutrients are carried by rivers into the ocean and they fuel the production of algae which can become so severe in some cases that it sucks the oxygen out of the water and kills the fish or produces toxins that can make it dangerous to swim there. So if you've seen a closed beach sometime on your holidays, it might have been because of an algal bloom, and that algal bloom might have been the result of human activity. In any case, from space, uh, chlorophyll distribution is beautiful and fascinating to look at. The other thing I'd like to show you is the ocean circulation. And you can see here the seawater velocity uh, just a small bit below the surface plotted globally. I'm going to zoom out so you can see this. And this is perhaps the most beautiful of all of the data that we have. You can see how the ocean is really a, a living, breathing part of our Earth environment system. And you see that the water is moving very fast in certain places, particularly at the equator. And this makes sense because the trade winds are there and because there's a lot of heat entering the Earth system at these points. And this drives a lot of the processes there. Another interesting thing to look at is, of course, the Gulf Stream, where warm water from the Gulf of Mexico exits that Gulf and then has to go somewhere. So where does it go? It goes northeast across the Atlantic and ends up bringing a lot of warmth and moisture to Europe. This is one of the reasons why the conditions in Europe are so good for people and for farming, because of the warmth that's brought across the Atlantic from this Gulf Stream. And it's one of the processes that we're observing in the course of climate change, because this might change as time progresses. I love how you can see 
this phenomenon so clearly and in a global way on Wakeo and how you can also step through the time and see how these different ocean circulation patterns change throughout the years. I hope that you, like I, have been impressed by these five fascinating phenomena. We live in a time when monitoring severe weather and environmental phenomena is more important than ever. And it's also the time when we have the greatest capabilities of doing that. Wakio is a great platform to examine these phenomena and gain a deep understanding of how our planet is working. These data are crucial in helping us to understand our environment, adapt to it and use it, and also to respond to environmental emergencies that take place. If you'd like to use these data in your work or to satisfy your own curiosity, I would encourage you to come visit the Wakeo platform. The data are freely available. And if you register on Wakeo, we also have several Jupyter notebooks and tutorials that can help you to become familiar with our offerings here and get you up and on your feet using our data products.